We are joined today by renegade SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce, uh, late of the Mercatus Center. She has written a very interesting, dare I say, blistering critique of a recent decision by the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission. Could you t talk just a little bit about the structure of the SEC for people who don't understand it? You know, this commissioner system. I've read your work on this. I know you were actually an advocate of that system. And now as someone who's, you know, inside of it, what is that like being, you know, on a, a board of commissioners who, you know, disagree on topics and, and how does that form or how does that affect the, the ultimate decision making process? Yeah, I mean, there are five of us and the chairman sets the agenda, and manages the staff. But and, and so we have less input on 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 sort of the rules that we're going to be doing and, and so forth. But we all have a voice and the idea is that you want to have people from different perspectives because you want to have some policy consistency over time. We we all vote on every enforcement action and on every rulemaking. Um, I, you know, people sometimes say to me, well, Hester, you do nothing except for talk about things. So why don't you just resign? And I think the point is, and other people say to me, well, someone who is as skeptical of regulation as you are shouldn't even be at a regulator. And my response is, I think it's really important to have people with different voices saying, we need to look at these things from a different perspective. And, um, you know, sometimes it takes a long time to shift the thinking, but I think it's it's worth having um, people sort of debating these things rather than just coming out with one view. I mean, the world is very complicated and there's there's more than one way to look at things. Uh, we've got two questions for you and we're going to let you go at 1.30. Um, first, can you, building on that, what is your general theory of good regulation in the financial sector? Um, you know, as when you were working at the Mercatus Center at George Mason, uh, you wrote, a, you, you were a fierce critic of Sarbanes-Oxley and Dodd-Frank uh, the last two mega kind of, uh, you know, pieces of legislation on the financial sector. What does good regulation look like? Um, you know, if, you know, if, yeah. if you were able to write that. Well, I think the first, my first principle is that if two people voluntarily agree that they want to do something, there needs to be a very good reason for the government to step in into that transaction and say, no, you can't do that or you have to do it differently. There are times when the two people's agreement to do something can have consequences for other people outside of that transaction. We have to be thinking about that. Um, so my my gen that's my general philosophy. I, I think we need to make sure that people's incentives um, are match up with consequences, right? So if you if you if you take a step that's a stupid step and you lose a lot of money, the government shouldn't be coming in to prevent you from losing it. Um, and unfortunately, that has happened a lot in our financial system, and it's sort of changed the way everything works. And it's led government to, to come in and say, well, since we're bearing the consequences when people make stupid decisions, we're going to try to make decisions for them. But because government doesn't have the right incentives, it's very difficult for government to make decisions effectively. Markets are much more effective at conveying information than a regulatory system is. And so we need to capitalize on that. We need to take advantage of the fact that markets transmit information really well. So that my, my theory is always, yeah, there's a place for regulation, but it shouldn't be the first place we look. It should be the last place. We what look. what does a good regulation or what what's an example, do you think, of a good regulation look, that actually I mean, reduces transaction costs without distorting you know, behaviors? I, or I think we can play a role in helping people get disclosure to make their own decisions about things. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and certainly, you know, there are rules around mutual funds that I think have been effective rules. Um, there, there are a lot of things the SEC does that I think do help reduce transaction costs. But I think too often we try to just jump in and make a merit-based decision based on our understanding of someone else's circumstances. And I find that really offensive. There's, Kind of the inevitability that regulators are going to try to regulate. You mentioned some of the issues that arise there with uh, kind of they get comfortable with incumbent firms and then makes it harder for new entrants. So this was all meant to disrupt that whole system. Is there a case for just saying, okay, if the SEC wants to 
put out some sort of registration form and make it optional and let people uh, who want to opt in to only the SEC approved versions, that's fine. But just let crypto be crypto and people can kind of enter at their own risk. Yeah, and I certainly understand that point of view, but I think we have the we have rules on the books. And to the extent that whether it's crypto or something else, those implicate the existing rules, then we have to enforce those rules. Now, if you're talking about do we want to develop a new regulatory framework where there really are gaps and where things really aren't covered? That's a conversation that we should be having. And I think one of the things I always say is don't jump to the conclusion that regulation is going to be the answer to solve your problems. Mm. I mean, a lot of the problems we saw with centralized entities in the crypto world during the last uh, year are problems that are very similar to problems we see with we've seen with traditional financial intermediaries. Um, but there also are things that people can do on their own to hold those intermediaries accountable. And as and as people working at intermediaries, they can do things to show people that they're that that they're doing what they're saying they're doing. So people in crypto shouldn't be jumping to the conclusion that regulation is is always the first and best answer. We have to have this conversation as a community. You know, I'm maybe on on one side of the spectrum and, and and saying look let's let's figure out whether there's a better way to do this but there are other people who are very much committed to having a regulatory solution and that's just something in this in this society we got to work out um, and figure out where most people are it's really important for people who are in crypto to think about you know applying the lessons from traditional finance right and thinking about that thinking about you know, if you're really trying to build something decentralized, what does that actually look like? And then sort of thinking about whether it makes sense to say, let's try to carve out the decentralized world and figure out whether and really make the pitch that regulation is not do, wouldn't play the same role there because the decentralization, the on chain aspects, the fact that everyone can participate on the same terms that actually takes the place of regulation. It's harder to make that case when you're talking about large centralized intermediaries that are holding people's assets. So it is important to think about where are the spaces where people just want to be able to say, yes, I'm opting in to a less regulated space. I'm certainly open to something like that. I don't know whether, you know, others in Washington are, but I, but I think, you know, everyone goes in eyes wide open. You've Could made you a choice to operate in a space that has less regulation than other spaces. Hey, thanks for watching that excerpt from our live conversation with SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce and crypto investor and writer Nick Carter about the government's escalating crackdown on cryptocurrency exchanges like Kraken and the broader DeFi economy. Join me and Nicholas B here every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern for more conversations like this and subscribe to Reason's YouTube channel for notifications whenever our videos go live. Thanks for watching.